What's up, everybody? I'm Sal Kwani. This, this, this is Reggie Steele. And welcome to Spitballing. Spitballing, spitballing. What's up, everybody? I'm Sal Kalani. This is Reggie Steele. And welcome to Spitballing. Yeah, uh-uh. let's get it. We here. So we back. We back, baby. Supposed to start at ten thirty. Like we... I was. Uh, we're gonna start at ten forty-five. I. I was trying to do an impression today of a Reggie Steele <laughs> Venmo payment late. Wait, 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 <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Did you just say ten forty-five? <laughs> And it's supposed to be ten thirty, and he showed up at ten forty six. And yeah, hey, hey, what the hey, dude? And the Venmo payment. Look, what they say about Jesus: He may not show up when you want him to, but when he show up, he may not come when you call him. But when he show up, be right on time. That's what it is. Man. Jesus may not sh- he may not come when you call him, but when he show up, he right on time. Hey, yo, your Venmo payment is not Jesus. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh man, what's going on, Reginald? Oh man. Um I think the biggest thing right now, at least for me, is I mean, I got a lot of big things. I got tons of big things going on, but I would say the biggest thing like right now. Like what? You ain't oh, got man. shit. <laughs> yeah, man. I wish. You got I that wish. broken ass house in Bama. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm still trying to get that done. I'm still trying to get that finished. What else? Uh just personal life. You uh-huh. know what's going on being at, a, being at an age where it's like trying to like you actually sent me a message you sent me a message where you're like yo i'm trying to get booked and i feel like you know shit is crazy right now it's, it's not happening the way i want it to and you're like oh yeah man the older you get the funnier you get and the less bookable you get <laughs> well and that's what i was gonna say when you're looking at the age man especially with this with this art form right here this craft you ain't even i mean older and funny is like it like that's that's the that's the that's the the creme de la creme but they want all the you know they want the youngsters who bring it in you know their tiktok followers and their the instagram followers and you know they aren't necessarily funny yet they're just kind of <laughs> interesting right they're kind of interesting i mean but, asses but, in the yeah, seats man <clears throat> i guess so but all their topics look i i've said it before and i'll say it again we are on a loop bro it's like I watch these new comics, the youngsters, and I don't want to sound like the old dude who's like, yeah. <laughs> but they're talking about the same. It's the same shit that we talked about, right? Right? right, right? right because right. everyone's experiencing the same thing at the same time. So I see, I listen to the young people, or the new people, and I go, "All right, man, I've heard that joke, and I've heard it better." Right, right, right. No, I've <laughs> like, experienced that. Yeah, I don't really want to be in the room. Then it's like, yeah, yeah. exactly. I'm like, yo, yeah. it's. I'm like your take on it is is so so basic. Yeah, yeah, it's so basic. It's so whack. It's so basic. Um, um, but uh, yeah, man. You know, career wise, thinking about career changes and needing to make more money. Um, I'm trying me. to maximize the money I do have, and you know, it's uh, it's just stuff, man. It's stuff. But I will say this too. And then trying to raise a son and trying to be present and trying to do everything I can to. To help him avoid all, the, I'm doing everything in my power to make sure that my son does not become a comedian, a stand-up <laughs> comedian. Okay, so that means you know, just being there, man. Right? And you take him trick or treating. I did. He he dressed up as a uh, he dressed up as Robin Hood. <laughs> Men in tights. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where, 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 <laughs> where did he see Robin Hood? The cartoon? What was he like? Uh, no books. You know, he's he's books. He's read books uh, and seen books with Robin Hood. So he stole candy from the rich and gave it to the poor. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, then can he can he shoot? He had a bow and arrow. He had a bow and arrow. The bow and arrow that actually the bow and arrow that came with the costume was actually legit. I was what? like, I was checking it out. I was like, hey, don't aim this at nobody, right? Like, don't shoot this at nobody. It's legit, man. Um, I uh, I did some uh, uh, bow and arrow shooting this weekend, Reg. Did you really? Yeah, I went to uh went to Lake Arrowhead. Okay. And uh so I you know they, it's cool they get the water here. from I guess. I don't know. I think that's where they get the water. <laughs> okay. uh, I hope they didn't because you know a lot of duck shit in that water, but <laughs> <laughs> that's what make it that's what give it its uh the, the taste, the the, the essence. 
But yeah. they have this little, uh, so we went and checked out this little Santa's village, right? And they have, okay. it's like a park, but I, I, they got archery there. <laughs> they got BB gun shooting and they got wow. axe, axe throwing. This sounds like some country ass shit. Oh, right you do this country is fun. Well, you go out in the mountains. So like there's, you know, down here you got Lake Arrowhead, you got Big Bears, the real popular one. And then there's, okay. uh, and then there's, uh, another smaller one's Idlewild. There's, a. Uh, but and then mammoth is way that's a little further. But so basically, big bears. So this is kind of like an offshoot of big bear. You know what I mean? Okay. But dude, you figure, you know, it wasn't big weekend. It wasn't really snow. There was a little snow on the ground because it's the mountains. It was cold. Right. But man, it's fucking packed everywhere. Like fucking L.A. Man, anything you go because there's like three restaurants. There's like two breakfast spots. There's lines out <laughs> both the doors. The yeah. goddamn. Went, I got a pizza the one night, bro. Guy said, "All right, take out." I, I heard it for I was like, oh, 20 minutes. No, he said hour 20 minutes. <laughs> oh my good for a pizza? For a pizza now. Yeah, damn it. But I'll say this, we waited because what else are you gonna do? There's no fucking, right. you know what I mean? Right. You're in the mountains and nothing else. So right. but they had a bar downstairs, which is nice. So I had a beer, it was outside, a little cold. But then uh pizza was fucking good. I'll tell you that. The pizza was really? damn good. Yeah, right? if you can make so, people wait an hour and 20 minutes, that shit better be a amazing i'm just saying we should open a fucking restaurant up there dog because they don't have much man and i was i was like fucking the gas station had two pumps i'm like two pumps i'm waiting for and, gas and one is broken that's a and at the shit. end it was like a breakfast spot on the way out and it's like we're like uh, should we go and there's a wait and i was like you know what fuck it let's just roll be, be in la in an hour and a half yeah, <laughs> and yeah, that's yeah, what we did because like dude la man the traffic sucks it's Dude, always that's what coming. happens when you live in a very popular place where everybody else wants to live. Tinseltown, yeah. man. People, everybody trying to make it. Oh, well, this is the crazy <laughs> thing. My fucking neighborhood, East Hollywood, all I wanted then, the plan was to have a sandwich when I got home. Just give me a big it's sandwich, right? Give me a Philly cheesesteak. Give me a meatball sandwich. I had lactate packed. I was ready. Let's do this, <laughs> all right? Dude, no, the two Italian delis in my neighborhood are closed on Sunday and the Philly cheesesteak place. I'm like, you can't uh, get a sandwich on a Sunday in my fucking neighborhood? What the yeah. hell is that about? Yeah, sandwich, recommending the sa sandwiches are like uh, observing the Sabbath. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the one place, they're like, oh, we only do pasta. There was two people in there. I was like, yeah, you're supposed to have sa sandwiches at, at noon, bro. Pasta at noon. Get the fuck, yeah. Dude, I don't think I've heard anybody ever be so upset about not being able to get meat and bread. <laughs> hey man, come from a sandwich background, right? It's big in the I Italian so. world. You know you can always go get that stuff at the store and make your own sandwiches. Now I'm talking about when you're coming back off a road though, and you're just no, tired and you want to get a sandwich and just chill, man. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. So um, hey, you're not a big sandwich guy, dude. I like sandwiches. <laughs> no, I love sandwiches. I, but it's got to. I gotta remember I right. made you a sandwich once. You're like, God damn, it's one of the best sandwiches I ever had, Sal. Mm, God damn. Did you make me a sandwich? Well, long ago, it was like in my old apartment in San Francisco. And I was living with Eli, I think, at the time, and I made oh, the one I off made Geary, some like sandwiches. Yeah, Geary? yeah, yeah, yeah. Thirty third. Thirty third in Geary. And uh, I remember I, I made a big old fat sandwich, put all kinds of stuff on it. You're like. Mm. God damn, seven, seven. This sandwich is good. <laughs> Maybe you missed your calling, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's about blood. I mean, this sandwich it, it must not have been that good. I don't remember it. Shit. <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's a long time. You're getting old in your age, son. You yeah, know, that's true. I'm getting a little long in the tooth. Uh, <laughs> uh, what was I going to say was, uh, yeah, man. So uh, this is the thing. This is the thing, right? Um, first off, you should probably just go get all the materials to make your own sandwich. Second of all, I usually I do, do like. I like sandwiches, but it's about the bread, right? Bread's like, important. Bread's bread. important. Yo, do not give me hard, tough bread ripping up the top of my mouth. That shit sucks. No, and now it's got to like, it could be crunchy, like a French baguette, like a little Maybe. French bread. But I hate when it's too hard. And you're right, that happens sometimes. If, it's if I gotta, if I got to bite through your sandwich like that, like I I, I got to yeah. really no, it's too no. much. Yo, give no. me give me that Dutch crunch. Or give me a that, that's roll. the hardest one. What are you talking okay, about? That crunch is not hard. It's it's <laughs> crispy on the outside, but then it's soft on the inside. So you cut, you break just like it. Italian and French. Mm, maybe. Look, the best the best bread out there is Italian, followed by French. Those are the best too. No wait, sourdough. The sour roll. Sourdough. Take your the ass back to the bay. Are you serious right now, dude? You're smoking. Yo, no. for all the listeners out there, for all the listeners out there, please in the comments post which is your favorite you would dish? take you would take sourdough over italian 
I like Italian. I like it. I'm not saying Italian's not bad, but give me. I the, didn't ask I you like that. I, asked... I like I like oh, sourdough, bro. I yeah, like, well, but I mean, no. I don't get Italian that often. I always get sourdough whenever I yeah, have a choice. Obviously. Yeah. Well, look, I'm not beholden to Italian. You're, you're right? Stuck there in chowder country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude, dude that they messed you up did you have this... sourdough in alabama no no yeah you like this freak bread because you're out there why is it freak bread it's delicious bread get that little sour taste on the Give end me the over french over a french loaf i mean you put a sandwich on an italian hoagie over a goddamn sour come on yeah, man. I like I like sourdough bread. Bro. I like sourdough and I like Dutch crunch and then I like the soft roll, which is usually the sour. And and look, the Italian's fine, the French is fine, but the French is always small. Like I don't nah, man. Look. So anybody who's listening in the comment section, please it's just post just post whatever bread you like. Whatever sandwich bread you like, uh, and we'll see how many are similar. How many I knew Des is here and she loves sourdough. Y'all, y'all wrong. Y'all Yo, that's wrong. insider trading, bro. You can't have her. Oh, she loves sourdough? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, now it's cool then, right? Yeah, yeah now it's cool. It's now it's cool. So. Man, yeah, mm-hmm. man, I don't get it, man. I mean, I don't mind it with some clam chowder in the middle. Don't get me wrong. But, right. you know, a little toasted. But, come on, Italian's number one. Hands Italian's down. Good. You know, you know what? Next time I get a sandwich, I'll get Italian, and then I, I'll do a side by side. I'll actually I'll ask for samples of them and see which a one. Sample. I like. I like Again, that's blasphemy, bro. Italian, Italian. Um, we we taught the world how to cook. <laughs> I thought that was the Greeks. Didn't the Greeks teach everybody? No, everything? that was from Sopranos. Junior Soprano says that in one uh, of the episodes. Okay, okay. He's talking about Italian food. He's like, we taught the world how to cook, and it's true, man. Like when they came here, it was very interesting. I, I saw this like um, documentary or something. I don't know. And uh, when Italians <laughs> first came here, the British they ate like shit, and they would like. Uh, the Italians would come in and put the veggies and meat together. And the British like, no, no, no. That's how you get sick. You don't mix the meat and the veggies. People get sick. You got to be on completely separate plates. And the Italians like, what the fuck are you talking about? We've been doing this our whole time for generations. This is how we cook. And uh, yeah, they introduced them to real flavor. And uh, <laughs> the British? No, they, they, well, the Amer- the Italians, when they came to America, because we were founded oh, to America. by America. Okay, I, yeah. I thought just my, because I was no, going to say I'm the British. About- colonial British times is, okay because i'm like the british yeah, no, is not Britain, known for their food no it still sucks they still haven't learned okay. indians okay. the indian people came and they make good indian food there but the british food right. come on man it's pretty trash my understanding um, uh, yeah. okay so this this is what i was gonna say off the top the thing that's going on oh, I've watched wait, this I, hold on before you do that i forgot the whole tangent was because i went and did archery oh yeah that's right and i sucked <laughs> Well, and I kinda, something, you every know, time I shot it, the fucking thing would hit my my big old knuckles. That's because you're doing it wrong, dude. This is well, the thing. And according oh, to the oh, chart I, I was too. looking at, there was a chart that showed me how. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm gonna say this, man, and this is also for you and for everybody else who's listening. If you don't do something, you can't say you're terrible at it. Right? <laughs> you're just saying that you're not good at it because I, you haven't done it. Like that's self talk. Like how you talk to yourself. Like, look. If I if I've never been skiing, which I haven't, I've never been skiing. So what am I gonna go get on skis? And the first thing I'm gonna say is, oh, oh I, I suck at ski. It's like, no, man. Let me learn how to ski. Now, after I learn how to ski and I've taken classes and I've been doing it for like six months to a year, maybe a couple of years, then I can say, yo, I suck at skiing, right? And archery. So for Christmas, Theo got a, um, he got well, a, I just want to say out. that was a positive moment brought to you by Reggie Steele. Ding. <laughs> right. Uh, but for Christmas, he got a, he got a really nice bow and arrow. So there's an archery place, not in the Oakland Hills, not far from here. So we've gone up there and like, they have all the, they have the, uh, the bullseye set up. They got big bales of hay with, you know, things that you can shoot and they have different ranges, right? Like, like there are different distances. Hey, dude, I'm telling you right now, when I say that, not this Christmas, but maybe after Christmas, yo, I'm getting a bow and arrow. But I'm getting like some serious compound, because there's dudes out there with these serious compound bows, man, that are like shooting like 50 yards. Well, oh, remember yards. that guy we stayed with? Uh, I was just thinking the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, in we, Virginia. Yeah, well, yes. we went to... Uh... 
Uh, see, this is the thing. Reggie Reggie wants to talk about, oh, man. And I'll show you some clips from the Clippers game. This video we'll, we'll share. But Reggie's like, man, my friend helped get you in that Clippers game. That's good. He's Clippers. Look here, folks. I brought Reggie Steele to the inauguration of the first black president of these United States in 2008, <laughs> Mr. Barack Hussein Obama. And it was an amazing historical moment. And you got to compare a basketball game to such such endeavors. Who compared it? <laughs> I didn't I'm just saying it. that trumps everything. <laughs> no, yeah. I look, look. I will say, going to as fuck that getting day. that invite with from you, which I appreciate. From to to the this other. was this was tickets I got from Senator Diane Feinstein. Yeah, and I did like yeah. the math because I sent her an email just like asking. Yeah, <laughs> and then like a, three two months later, I got the thing, and it was like I did the math. It was like a point zero zero three percent chance of all the people who submitted that I would get those tickets. Wow, and they were okay, but I mean, we were we had a million people behind us, which Dude, was, I was amazing. Say, they were better than okay. We yeah, were yeah, there. and yeah, yeah, and it's true because then our friend Greg Edwards had supposedly like the purple section. We had silver. His was supposedly a little better, but then okay. he got stuck in the tunnel, and then they didn't even get to see it because there oh, was Greg so many Edwards people. was out there at the same time. Yeah, and he got stuck in the tunnel. And then there's a famous thing, his girl, his girl Janelle, because Jesse Jackson was walking through the tunnel and she jumped in front of him and it's like, Jesse, you're wrong for what you said about Barack. <laughs> no way. Hell yeah, dude. And Did she's Jesse right. apologize? Did he say I don't know? I think he just kept walking, but oh, okay. like it'd been great you know, if Jesse would have would have apologized. We'll have to ask. We'll have to ask. Because yeah, we had him on. Out. We didn't ask him about it when we had him on the pod. Who, Jesse Jackson? No, we didn't ask no, him. No, fool. That's who you met. I'm talking about Greg when we had Greg on. <laughs> no, we didn't ask him about that. I would See, love but then when Jackson. Reggie met Jesse Jackson, he just kissed his ass. Reggie was afraid to defend Barack Obama in front of Jesse Jackson. <laughs> and when you met Jesse Jackson, you said, oh, that's right. You never met Jesse Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's a, <laughs> I wonder if Jesse was like uh, when she jumped out. He's like, "What you said about Barack was wrong." I wonder if Jesse was like, "I uh, uh Jesse Jackson, I apologize for saying something that was, you know, what was the whole thing about Jesse? Jesse would they said there was a comedian years ago on Def Jam who said, um, he said, man, Jesse Jackson be making up words. He be making up words. For example, Jesse be like, now." When we march on Selma, Alabama, <laughs> we must jogatize. Like what? Did you did you just say jogatize? <laughs> we, we must jogatize. <laughs> it's not quite running. It's not quite walking. It's somewhere in between, right? Um, hey, good, good for her for speaking up. You know, but she needs to. Take I mean, yeah, and too. the whole thing. If people don't remember. Uh, it was kind of something about Barack yeah. wasn't speaking enough for the black community, I believe, right. and he was upset, right. and he and he kind of threw it out there. But the thing was, we were on a precedent. I said that word wrong, but we're on that moment precedent. of history, precedent. and precedent. this guy is trying to get elected. And yes, uh, you want to help your own people, but you know he knows that's what 12 percent of the vote, and this dude's trying to win over white people, the first time ever, and yeah. it was kind of like. Um, it was like he knew how to he knew the line to drive ride. You know what I mean? He knew how to be <laughs> moderate to get both sides on his side. The well, dude, dude carried more is... states than anyone that I've seen. So it's yeah, great. And and let's be honest, man. Let's just be honest. I'm gonna get down to brass tacks. He will be the president of the United States. That includes all people, right? right? So the idea that we have this guy who's you know the first black, half black, half white president in our time that we know of. Because there is some history about some other people potentially being, but whatever. Um, he's the first person in that position. How about we just get him in office first? Right, right. right? That was all it was, right. Exactly. It's like, yo, that's the problem that I have with, for me, it doesn't make any sense, right? It's like, yo, if I'm here and I'm trying to do something, I'm doing something historical, I understand the struggles and the plight of Black people. The dude was a community organizer. He worked he was on the ground with people of right. color struggling, trying to help them get something. So he understands the, right. the you know what's needed in that community right? right so but he's at this point where he's like i'm in a position where i might be able to actually do something let me get there and right. then let me address everything because i gotta i can't just govern or president for i can't just be president for the black people like i gotta be president for all people right, right? so it's like right. it's not fair to him for people to come out especially look and we know people personally who did this who have platforms that can speak right it's like 
don't you guys understand timing? Right? Like, let the dude get in it. That, right. It's like, and that's my problem with all the like the Bernie buddies because yeah. they're all like, oh, Bernie, Bernie, you get it. This is how you split. I'm like, Brah, he's got to be electable. We live in a conservative ass country. Dude got smoked in South Carolina by Joe Biden. Like you think, you know what I mean? It's yeah, like it's... he wouldn't. I don't think he would have done it. Maybe in 2016, but you know, 2020, he he didn't he, he didn't have a chance. Dude, it is so crazy to me. It's almost like it's like somebody complaining to you about you know you're not driving fast enough. Like, dude, we're in a hurry. You're not driving fast enough, and it's like, bro. We're still in the apartment getting dressed, right? <laughs> like, can I get like, can I get in the car first? Can I put on my my driving gloves and like get prepared and find out where we're going before I start trying to do something? Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. But you know, it's all for it's all for show. Everyone's trying to get some attention. All right, wait, now... one more thing before you bring up your thing. Uh, axe throwing, bro, is fun. Oh yeah, that's right. We gotta axe try throwing. that. My first one, I made it. And then, then I then, then I struggled. One. And then one almost took my leg out and like bounced off the thing and came rolling back at me. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> the axe with a vengeance. <laughs> yeah, but dude, it's fun, bro. It's the only time I've done it, but we you should to, try is it. A hatchet sometime. or is it? It's, a, it's, it's like a hatchet. It's like a hat. No, one, one hand. Okay. It's like it's a one hand, hand hatchet. And you, okay. and uh, yeah, but it's you know it's hard to hit it right on though. You got to hit yeah. it at the right rotation or that shit don't it don't Once stick again, and bounces. What, what, so how many times have you gone hatchet throwing? This is my first time. Exactly. First, first, but hey, beginner's luck. First shot. Yeah, the first shot, beginner's luck. I say go back. Go back. I haven't done that one. I want to do that one. But also yeah, go around. back to finish the it's other a, thing. I'm gonna get a I'm gonna get a born arrow, bro. I'm gonna get like oh right. A, we didn't even talk. Man, we tangent like a motherfucker. No wonder well, we nobody listens right to right our now. podcast. So so hey, we <laughs> stayed when we went to the listeners. inauguration, we stayed with this hunter. Sorry. Sorry that we're all over the place. <laughs> listeners, go ahead. So always... and and Reggie <clears throat> and I the guy hunted with bow and arrow, which I respect way more than a gun. So, like, yo, do it like the natives used to do it. So he yeah. hunts with bow and arrow, but he had it, all his clothes and stuff in a bag covered in dirt and whatever piss so people wouldn't so the animals wouldn't smell yeah them. yeah he would blend in and he it was like camouflage it, it looked and like, he would hold the bow all day right for like a half hour 15 minutes well yeah he would sit there he would like he he was shrouded in camouflage and leaves and smells and stuff and <laughs> and then he's got a boy he's in the bushes and he had this intense bow i have a picture do you still have your pictures probably i don't know i have to go yeah, i have mine too i just don't know where they are but i mean it was one of those bows and it had a trigger so you pull it back. It would hook to, you put this thing on your wrist and it had a hook on it. And so you're not pulling back with your arm. You're just pulling your arm back, right? Like mm -hmm. this. And then it would, you get to a point where the compound bow, the pulley system would kick in and it would be like a lot easier to get back. And then there was a trigger like a gun. God like, damn. On his arrow? Yeah, there was a trigger. <clears throat> now what about so the one that you You weren't sitting there like get. this holding it. You were holding it. The tension was at your, at your hand here. And then with the trigger, it would it would open. Okay. Now, what about the one that you you had? Uh, Theo's or that, had, yeah. The one Theo's. that Theo has has a little. Um, it's got a little pulley system on it too, but it's legit, right? Like it's legit. It's a real. And the arrows are probably about this long, really skinny, um, metal tips. Like if he shot it at somebody, he could. Yeah, uh, could, wait, is there a pulley damage. system on it or no? Yeah, it's a it's a small pulley system for a little kid. Like it's for his See, age. like the ones I had, there were no pulley system. It was just like a you know. Okay. Well that's so he couldn't one... get as much power in it. Oh, this one, the one that he got for Christmas has a pulley system. Now the one that it came with the Robin Hood costume, no pulley, but tons of tension. And so you could really, you could really do something. But I'm gonna get a bow and arrow, bro. I've made my mind up. <clears throat> this is it. I've made my mind up for the next year. I'm gonna get a bow and arrow. And I'm start going up there and shooting arrows. Have I'm you shot get... before with them? Yeah, yeah, I've shot them before. Um, I'm gonna get so I'm gonna get the born arrow. I'm also gonna get my uh, my gun license, and I'm gonna uh, yeah, I'm gonna get, get a gun, a gun license. dude. Dude, I'm gonna get a shotgun, bro. Oh, you like I'm... like like uh, <laughs> Chappelle says? <laughs> Yo, straight up, I'm not like I don't need no handgun. I don't need no fifty cal. I don't need no Desert Eagle. I don't need no 45 or 38 Smith and Wesson. I don't need no high caliber hand hand cannons. I just want the straight up. I want that. That right there. I just want to rack that joint. What things are getting tough in Oaktown, bro? 
Man, things are getting tough everywhere. Do you live under a rock, bro? <laughs> like, no, I live right outside off of Sunset Boulevard. He's like, in fact, <laughs> I live on the street. <laughs> um, the whole world, man. The whole world is crazy, man. I'm just like, I, look, you're, I have no scared, desire. Reg? Man, I ain't trying to, I don't want to kill nobody. Who's going to go up three flights of stairs in your apartment building, knock on your door, and then wait for you to pull out a shotgun on them? The crazy person who would do it. The, the person that you don't think is going to do it. The person that everyone says, I never thought that this would happen in this neighborhood, but this nah. community, we never believed what, hey man, anything is possible. I'm not even, it ain't even necessarily just for that, right? I mean, the shotgun is for home protection, obviously, but uh, yo, I'm trying to, that's my, I'm just, I'm just going to get it, put it away, go to the range, learn how to use it properly, take the class and then just have it because you never know. And that's it. I ain't on some conspiracy shit, right? I ain't like got water in the basement. Oh, there we go. Um, Here it is, bro. You done with your story? <laughs> no, because I still yeah. have one. Okay, go ahead. Go. And then You're a gun the owner. Thing. But yeah, here's uh, so this is all I can find right now. I don't know where all the pictures are. This is how I found this little. Oh, this is, oh, this is, this is us at the inauguration in 2009. Yeah. There's him on the paper. There's you and me with a cardboard cutout of Obama. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Look at that. That's cool, bro. Oh, yeah, hold up, man. Okay. I have a picture. I have a picture that I have framed. I yes, have, you got do a have a nice box. frame. Yeah, with the I still don't. I still didn't get mine framed. I should do that. Yeah, I got mine framed with the with the uh, letter here. You want me to show it to you? Hold on a second. Oh, with uh, with the ticket. You have yours with the yeah. ticket, right? Oh yeah, there it is. Oh yeah, yeah with the button. Yeah, with the button. Yeah, that's the, the button ticket. And the ticket. Yeah, man, I remember seeing that. I walked in Reggie's place. And he didn't even put me in. <laughs> you put me in his frame. I do have a picture with you and I. I should have. Yeah, here it is. Here, I'll. Uh, there we are. Oh yeah. Okay. That's. I should have put that one in there. That's a good. Look at us, dude. So damn cold, back, dude. <laughs> it was freezing. That's the coldest I've ever. I was been wearing in my that life. jacket this weekend. <laughs> dude, I still. Me got that too, but too. that was, and then I went to Edmonton, uh, Canada, and I went to this national park that one day, and it was the coldest day, and it was minus thirty. Jeez. Now, but the thing is, I kept the car running, got out, took some pictures of Buffalo, got back in. This, we had to sit in it for like hours. It was like, Dude, what, eight hours or something? It was crazy. It, it was Our sad. toes, you couldn't feel. Oh, man. It's the coldest that I've ever been. And it was, it's. I learned a very valuable lesson. And the lesson that I learned was no matter what you do, you can cover up your head, your neck, your chest, your back, your legs, your knees, your ankles, whatever. Dude, just make sure that you have on multiple pairs of socks. Uh, because well, I, I still on, did, and it didn't matter. Dude, I had on one pair of socks. My feet were freezing. I felt like yeah. I was standing on ice the whole time. I wish I had um, those little heater things that people squeeze. You put those oh, in yeah, your shoes. Oh, my feet. hands. Oh, my hands. Yeah, uh, it was. Yeah, it was ridiculous. All right. So anyway, the place. open. What was your whole thing? <laughs> I will say oh. this one more thing. It was so happy. Everyone was so happy. I just remember yeah. walking around yeah. beforehand, days before. It was just like everybody. It was sea love of everywhere. Happiness, man. man. It was yeah, a, it was love a, and a cool time. That it was, we need to uh, try and find again as a country. <laughs> I, you know what? It was. It was so. That time was so impactful, bro. And how people were responding, at least for us that were there, right? Mm -hmm. It feels like, in retrospect, it feels like the pendulum swung too far. Mm -hmm. Right, because you know the pendulum swings, and it swung so far over to this way that when he came out of office, it was like, because we've yeah. done a complete one eighty from what yeah. it was. Right, yeah. like it felt like. And now look for our segment of society and who we hang out with and who we talk to. Obviously, we're on the same page, so our perception is our reality in that sense. But obviously, there was a whole segment of society that felt the opposite, the complete opposite. Right, yeah. and the first chance that they got to express themselves. They came out with a vengeance. Yeah. Right? So it kind of started sucks. with their, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's annoying. Yeah. It's annoying. It starts with a racist tea party and then some stupid orange idiot lying about the guy's birth certificate. It's just yep. like and your whole just... fucking political career career he'd started from a lie. So from a lie. So, so I'm glad those said... losers lost in the Senate, though. That was great. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh so what I was gonna say at the very beginning. The thing that's going on right now. <laughs> you want to go ahead and throw another tangent out there before we get into it? Is 
Dave Chappelle's SNL monologue or his his uh yeah the yeah, beginning yeah, of yeah, his, his monologue. monologue. Hey dude, I've watched it maybe four three or four times. Four times maybe. Hey man, it's it's nothing less than brilliant. The dude is a genius. I literally I watched it and I was like why would I ever try to do stand up if I can't do this right it's almost the same thing like I kind of felt that way when I like watching Michael Jordan when I was young he's so good that it kind of makes you go if I can't be that good should I even play <laughs> right but you know you just end up you try to be the best you can be but watching Dave I was like yo this set is brilliant I feel like he hit the nail on the head I felt like he walked the line bro he took it to the edge and he just stayed I felt on like that yeah edge. I watched it last night uh I was laughing it was really funny uh it was the, the, the beginning I feel like the beginning in, in the Kanye and then the end but don't you feel somewhat in the middle it went a little because even the crowd kind of when he started talking about Jewish things uh it started well and then it went off and then he went came picked back up once he did Herschel Walker and yeah then boom, boom, but, boom, boom. but that's what I'm saying that's what the beautiful part about the whole thing is the dude started off by saying I I disavow any or whatever you said. I you know I um... right, but then to say like oh, there's a lot of Jewish people in LA. A lot. I mean, a lot. It's like almost you know he's he's almost like uh, blowing a little on the flames of that trope that Jews you know? run everything. And and what did he say? Don't just take it out. Don't don't deliver it out of context. He goes, I've been to LA. It's a lot of Jews. I'm talking about a lot of Jews, right? And he goes, but what does that mean? There are a lot of black people in Ferguson, Missouri, and they don't run things, right? But that was a he's, good that was a good lot reference. That was yeah. a great line, right? Because yeah. he's saying, because he did say he goes, I can see how somebody can go to LA and if they start trying to connect dots and do all this other kind of stuff and make these lines, that they may come to that conclusion or they may say something like that. But mm, what does it mean? Right, the other right, one that he said, right. the other one that I thought was brilliant that I loved was he goes you know he broke the rules and everybody knows the rules if it's black people it's a gang if it's italians it's a mob and if it's jews it's a coincidence and you don't say anything about it right mm -hmm. i was like yo that's fucking brilliant he walked the line bro i mean i'm talking about he he talked about the perception and how people may perceive things and what's going on but then at the same time you know debunked it by saying yeah there's tons of people. In I feel. I think some people feel like it wasn't debunked. That's that's on that's their that's their own. <laughs> I'm just saying what's out there. I loved what he was saying about Herschel Walker. That shit was funny as hell. Oh my god! When well, he said he said I don't want to talk bad about the guy because he's black, so I'll just say he's observably stupid. <laughs> so, he says even when he's not talking, he kind of stands there with his mouth open sometimes, like. <laughs> and then he showed his bottom teeth like <laughs> dude I thought it was brilliant man I really thought I was sitting up there thinking I don't know how as a comedian right I mean and look this is the beautiful part about comedy is obviously it's subjective and one man's trash is another man's treasure and we don't all have to do the same thing right but personally for me the way that I would love to be able to express myself I would love to be able to express myself the way Dave does but he's, he's really smart. He can take in the information, he processes it, and then he gives it back to you in a way that's digestible. Someone, um, Chris Rock does the same thing. Like he'll distill a really big thing down to a small thing for you to fully understand it. But somebody uh, wrote an Oscar Wilde quote on uh, as a comment on one of the videos I saw. And he said, that, uh, I guess Oscar Wilde said that um, if you, it's always better to tell the truth or it's easier to tell the truth if you make people laugh, because if not, they'll kill you. Right. Right. Um, I felt like Dave did a great job of making people laugh and, and telling the truth. He is good at trying to, yeah, at that. Did you see yeah. the sketch with the house of dragons and all yeah, the Chappelle yeah. guys? That it was, was like funny. a, it was a, a homage to the Chappelle show. He brought back right, all the characters. Right. 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 Um, <laughs> yeah. I thought it was cool. Chair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was pretty good, but I, I loved it, man. I thought it was really good. I thought that Dave really kind of hit the nail on the head and, uh, 
I thought the other line that was pretty funny and great too was when he said, he, he said, he said, what did he say? He said, Kanye, Kanye yeah, did something. Doing. Yeah, Kanye was so bad that he got Kyrie in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then yeah. he had another good point about Kyrie, right? Like, he was like, yo, you cannot blame Black Americans for the struggles of Jewish people. Like, you just can't, right? Because but like how is anyone doing that that's where that's another one that was kind of like well no because think about it all the stuff they got Kyrie doing they want Kyrie to do right now right him trying to come back it's ridiculous but him sharing Alex Jones fucking movie that has anti-semitic shit in it is also really ridiculous is it Alex Jones that's the name of the guy yeah the fucking nut job dude the guy who fucking said that the kids who got shot well, it didn't happen. It's Sandy Hook. I'm like, what the fuck? If you're gonna oh, be- wait, 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 no, no, no. The, I'm talking about the guy. You're talking about the guy who shared it, but not the guy who wrote it. Because the guy who wrote it is a. Is I don't a Muslim know who dude. the fuck's movie, but that's where he got it. He's tweeting from Alex Jones. Oh, so like, yeah, you can't and, and follow Alex him, Jones. Yeah, and then the way he like responded about like he just should have apologized. And Dave brought that up too. He like him hard on it and tried to be a smart ass about it, and it was just right. like he didn't want to just admit he was wrong. But yeah, okay, now well, they're dragging him through the trenches. I mean, and this is another thing, and people are all upset, but yo, Kyrie ain't Kanye, dude. Kanye no. really fucked up, all right? Yeah, yeah, Kanye really fucked up. But Kanye, <laughs> I love I love the way Dave broke it down, because I did see the part where Kanye was on Drink Champs, and he said, he said, I can say, this is what he did. He did just like this, and you can see the microphone. He goes, I can say anti-Semitic shit, and Adidas can't drop me. And then he doubles down, he goes, I can say anti-Semitic shit mm. and Adidas can't drop me. He said it twice. I think he said it twice. Oh. And I think in that in that episode, at that moment, in the background, you heard <laughs> <laughs> and Noriega was like, Hey yo, Kanye, it's Adidas. <laughs> Hello? It is a rap. What? So what you mean you dropped me? <laughs> yeah. He dropped him yeah, with the dude. Uh well, I got the I like they also did that barbershop sketch. And they were all like, uh, yeah, oh, I can't believe Kyrie, what does he say? Oh, what does he say? And then the guy's like, oh, yeah, then the vaccination. <laughs> or, and the other one was like the flat earth. And then he's like, yeah, then you want to get vaccinated. And they're all like, mm-hmm. you remember that? Did you see that one? I never saw the barbershop one because they, they oh, took it off the watch air. It. Oh, no. Yeah, there's a barbershop sketch that they did SNL with. Oh, SNL uh, did. Oh, okay, I thought you were talking about the one that I didn't. The uninterrupted one because no 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 there's a yeah. they did a sketch too it, it was Chappelle and uh Keenan and it was all everyone was uh black cutting people's hair except this one white guy who worked okay. there and like they would bring up social issues and then he would say the one thing and it would kind of be awkward and then they just go back to cutting hair <laughs> okay I gotta see it I gotta see uh, it. you gotta see it it's pretty fun you know what like, though no, I, yeah I they're good like... at you know doing all that I just that thought line. about it you mean you mentioned Keenan when I saw Dave at the punchline recently, I don't know if I remember telling you. Did I tell you that Keenan was there? Oh, Keenan Thompson? Keenan Thompson was there. He was in the oh, green room. And he cool. came walking out when the show started. And I was going to say something, but I was just going to say, you know, what's up, man? Really think you're funny. Appreciate your talent or whatever. But he was doing his Hollywood thing where he had his shades on and he was kind of walking like, you know. Like Why are you? It's so dark in there already. How can you well, see? Well, you know, hey, man, them Hollywood types. <laughs> The motherfuckers wear they, they wear sun sunglasses in, at, at night, night, bro. At <laughs> night, in the middle of the night, it's like yo, no one can see you, dog. Like it's <laughs> it's too dark. So, but yeah, I thought Dave did a good job, man. I really did. I, All I, right, I, well, I let's wrap. It. I want to wrap up with this, bro. Okay. So, uh, here it is. Let me. Where is it? Where is it? So, uh, cause it's, it's funny, man. It's been a long week, but I forgot this was, this is a week ago, bro. There, there's Marcus and I in the, uh, his seats, man, are amazing. His it's a Clippers amazing. game. Hold you up. go down it's And so he's going down and he goes say, what's up to the security guy on the floor. Yeah. And I'm like, all right. And then I'm like, what? and he goes, oh, right here. I'm like the first row, first row, right up hey, against man. the thing. Like no one in front of me. You just put right there on the ledge. It was amazing. Hold up, though. I got to say this real quick. Just for all our listeners and anybody who's watching, that dude in that picture with Sal, that is one of my best friends in the whole wide world. I've known that dude since I was in elementary school. He didn't even know me when I knew him. And then we went to <laughs> high school together and played. we played basketball together in high school. And I've known him, you know, since oh, I yeah. was like 10, 
like nine or 10 or something. So uh, yeah, man, that's my boy Marcus. He's an attorney in Los Angeles and he's done really well for himself and he got some great seats. And he took my boy Sal to the game. Marcus sent me that picture and I was like, man, I should be there. Yeah, well, there's only two seats. It's all you got, man. So I can just, I'll just kneel in the back behind (laughs) y'all. But I was like, honestly, I was like, yo, these are two of my favorite people in the whole wide world at this joint. And the only reason they even know each other is because of me. And I ain't even (laughs) there. I was like, this is some bullshit. Now, look at this. This is is the view, man. Like, look, you can see them. uh, This is Paul George with the pretty much the the dagger and one. But yeah, that was so close, man. Yeah, it's so close. Yeah, man, it's a that being able to sit that close to the game, it's a completely different feel than when you sit it's, way up in the You rafters. realize how fast the game is. Yes, and how These big guys they are, are fast in the flow. Yeah, everyone's tall as hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a different feel, bro. I'm and I'll be you. it's weird. It's weird because they I didn't feel the tension as much. Like the Cavs blew a fucking 12 point lead with four minutes left, and you like if I was at home watching it, you'd constantly see the score and the time. And mm-hmm. then during commercials, you'd be like, ah, but here they're throwing shit in the crowd. You're on the floor. You don't even really notice the scoreboard constantly. Yep. It's yep. going so quick. And um, yeah, it was weird. And that was a strange part. Like the, the tension, it was such yeah. qu- it felt so quick. Well, yeah, I guess also the announcers build up the tension and build that moment where it's live. You get none of that. Right. So Right. Yeah. Like, like I, w- I say all the time that I think that um, I think sporting events live are fun, but I think sporting events on television are better. Right. Yeah. And, I, I, yeah. I could see like football, I, I think, is one of the better ones. Definitely. Oh, on, uh, TV. But well, baseball is boring as fuck on TV. Give me that live. No I mean, way. I mean, it's no boring way. either way. <laughs> Dude, baseball on television is phenomenal. You get to be what? right behind. You get to be right behind the catcher or right behind the pitcher. You see the pitches. You see how the ball curves. They give you the speed of the pitch. You get to see the the fielding, right? Because at a game, when you're watching, trying to see the ball and then seeing the guy. It's boring, bro. Dude, are you crazy? Dude, I tell you what's boring. An NFL game live is probably one of the most boring things ever. (laughs) It is literally, this is it. You got these teams that come out, they line up, and they go like this. Like, like, and then they stand around and breathe. (laughs) And they breathe I'll say for like this. two minutes. They sit there for two minutes, oh, breathe, and then they line back up and they butt. go. <laughs> if, here's the thing with football. Uh, uh, ab- I love it like above. Like, I know it sucks. So you don't want the nosebleeds. But one cool thing is when you're up, you can see the plays form, like the yeah. patterns and the routes. Yeah. But but if you're near the floor, like I was really close once, and it's amazing that too because it's so fast. It's so fast. The guys are big as hell and they're quick as hell, strong as hell, and you see why they're professionals. But a football game, like watching a football game, even watching a high school football game, a college football game, you can't see everything, so you're missing stuff all the time. You miss, you're yeah. Watching. The instant replay is nice. It, I mean, now they got the screens and stuff, but they do. the instant replay and then the play by play. And then they go back and they show you like, yeah, well, see no, over here, you know, they were, they were concentrating on him. But if you look over here, then they, they missed him. And this guy, you go, Oh, I didn't see that at all. Right. Yeah. I'm watching it right. is way better. Basketball. I will say basketball live and on the floor and stuff like that. Like it, it's, it's so fun. Like everyone's yes. having fun. Cause it's a quick yes. game. Everyone's watching yeah. like everyone's. And this is another cool thing about Clippers games that uh, and Marcus was telling me a lot of people, you know, the season ticket holders, the marquee games like just that that could sell they're gonna have to sell the people from there so a lot of people from cleveland so anytime i go take a piss or walk someone see me in my cleveland hat they're like what's up man go Cavs." <laughs> yeah nice nice it's not like the not like going to a raider game where you wear the opposing team's hat they beat you up in the bathroom yeah they throw shit at you they throw shit at you <laughs> yeah man i thought that was cool man i thought that was cool i've yeah, been going times. to a game there before and we sat in those seats and uh no, yeah, no, man. you haven't sat in these specific seats because he said he's like I've only had these seats two years. He's like we moved even oh. closer. He's oh, like yeah, okay, Reggie so. ain't sitting these seats. <laughs> okay, there you go. All right, well there you go. But you know, Mike, he... he likes he likes to talk to Smack. He kept yelling at Kevin Love every time he's at the line. He's like, "Hey Kevin, hey Kevin, how old are you?" And he just kept giving crap. And then I I yelled out. I was like, "That's all right, Kevin." You a fine wine. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody was laughing. That's yeah, awesome, it was man. fun, man. It yeah, Marcus. Fun Marcus is definitely, um, you know, he likes to talk trash, bro. 
Like he's gonna, yeah, he yells yeah. out and does the whole thing. He was telling me how he, he bro, he tore his ACL playing basketball, so he's kind of done on that. Yeah, I told him a long time ago. I was like, "Yo, man, hang it up." Yeah, you too <laughs> old. For that. I and then, dude, I did that. I hung it up after I saw my buddy. Like, you know, I, I should definitely exercise more. I'm out of shape, but like my buddy, uh, we were just playing one on one, and we play every time in Sacramento when I do shows, and he just shot a three, it jumped and shot a three, and just went. And then, like, dude broke his Achilles, tore his Achilles. Oh, I had to like Achilles. hobble him home, dude. And then, uh, luckily, we weren't far from the house. And then, uh, yeah, man, he was like bro- fucked for six months. Yes, I'm gonna tell you right now, man, of all the injuries I've had, right? I got a screw in my right leg, I've you know, have I've put my Osgood slider, I've torn my patella tendon in half or ripped my tele- patella tendon in half. I got two broken toes on my right foot, I've had. I've had two stitches here. I've had seven stitches here. I've had seven stitches here. Like Damn. I have, I've got first, second, and third degree burns, scars. I've been through it, dude. My body has been through it. I bruises, pull, I pull my my hamstring a number of times. But the thing, the thing that scares me more than anything, and I don't know what this is, is rupturing my Achilles. There is the the idea of that. Oh. It, it makes me I mean, shudder. It took down, you know, a half god in the Greek world. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, yeah, Troy, right? Yeah, Achilles. It's, a, it's Achilles. It, well, his name was Achilles. Yeah, it took down yeah, Achilles yeah, in the movie yeah. Troy. <laughs> that uh, is kind of crazy. To be like, what should we name him? We'll name him his only vulnerable part. <laughs> <laughs> Achilles. No one will Yo. know how to shoot him or where to shoot him. <laughs> yeah, dude, I I know guys. I know a guy who ruptured both of his Achilles. And at the uh, same time? No, no, no. Two oh. different times. But the thing that is, sucks. it's like a rubber band. So when it happens, yeah. and, and it's like it'll it'll ball up on your leg. But you know what? The Achilles, excuse me, it um it heals on its own. They used to do really? a whole surgery. Yeah, they used to do like Marcus's when he ruptured his Achilles, they didn't do anything. They put his he put his leg in a uh of um a well, doesn't boot. they have to put it back together or something? No, he said it. It goes back. They don't. Weird. They don't do anything to it. Now they used to do a whole thing back in the day, but then I guess they learned that if you just leave it be, it'll heal on its own. Huh. So there you go. Yeah. So all right, we'll wrap us up, Reginald. All right. Well, um, <laughs> to our listeners today, I'm sure that you've en- all over the place. I, I hope you've enjoyed our uh, our erratic, sporadic. Uh, <laughs> Tangent field, sandwiches, all inaugurations, archery, Dave Chappelle, Kyrie, Kanye. If, if that's his name anymore, uh, yay! We all over the place, but it was fun, man. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, so please like, subscribe, and share if you did, and uh, we appreciate you listening. That's Sal Kalani. I'm Reggie Steele, Peace. and this is Spitballing. Peace. <laughs>